My life is like a true Cinderella story, but I don't mean the parts with the glass slipper and the talking animals. I had a real evil stepmother and stepsister. I remember people saying that my real mom, dad, and I were the perfect family. We lived simply and we loved each other very much. We always went to the park to feed the ducks. That was our special place. I loved throwing bits of bread while my parents sat on the bench holding hands. My mom and dad were still super in love with each other. I never thought that happy time would come to an end. I believed all the bedtime stories they would read to me at night. I believed that I would have a happily ever after. Do you want your own happily ever after? If you do, click like and subscribe to our channel. Only a few months after my eighth birthday, my mom got sick. There were a lot of trips to the hospital. My parents always declared that my mom would get better. So it was a great shock to my dad when she didn't. After her funeral, my dad was a mess. I tried to take care of him as much as I could, but I always heard him crying at night. I missed my mom horribly, but she was the love of my dad's life. But somehow, he pulled himself together for me. That's why it was such a surprise when my dad got remarried in just over a year. I don't know if Angela cast a spell on him or whatever. It happened really fast. One day, he told me he met a nice friend from work. The week after that, he told me they were going to get married. I tried not to mind it. Deep inside, I knew that my dad was still heartbroken about losing my mom. I wanted him to be happy. In a month's time, my dad got married. I was a bridesmaid, along with Angela's own daughter, Stacy, who was a year younger than me. Right after the wedding, Angela decided that we couldn't fit in our small house. She wanted to move to a bigger place, with a pool and a big garden. My dad agreed, but like I said, it was like he was bewitched. He always just nodded at everything that Angela said. We moved into a huge house that cost a fortune. My dad had to focus on his business to make sure that we had enough money. I didn't see him a lot. But all his hard work paid off. We got rich really fast. Stacy and I got trust funds all of a sudden. Angela wasn't so bad at first. I knew that she was kind of jealous of me, but I thought it was all normal. I tried very hard to be like a true daughter to her. I made her breakfast in bed. I brought her flowers on Mother's Day, but she never warmed up to me. I tried to befriend Stacy too, but she was always with her mother. When I was 14, my dad got sick. It was stage three cancer. There was nothing the doctors could do. I was devastated. He told me not to worry. Angela was going to take care of me. On his deathbed, with all of us huddled around him, he told me not to be sad. I'm going to see your mom again, he said with a whisper. Even when he was already dying, I could see the hopeful look in his eyes. I knew then that he was still in love with my mother. But I also saw Angela's eyes. Her eyes weren't red from crying. Her eyes were red because she was angry. Somehow, life went on after that. I knew my dad wanted me to go on. I still went to high school. But Angela found ways to shut me out of everything else. She conveniently forgot about my birthday. She took Stacy and left me alone on holidays. She always bought the best things for her daughter. But when I needed money, she told me that we barely had enough. One time, she said that she needed my room and ordered me to move into a small, unused room in the basement. We got into a big fight after that. With my trust fund, I knew I had money for college. I got into a state university and decided to get an apartment on campus. I just couldn't live at that house anymore. One day, I decided to check my mailbox. There were two letters that arrived weeks ago. One was from the college. My check for the second semester bounced. There was also a note from my landlord. She couldn't cash in my check to pay for last month's rent. I needed to settle it immediately so I wouldn't get evicted. What was going on? I quickly jumped into my car and drove home. I needed to clear this up with Angela. I heard the most terrible thing. She told me that she got a special power of attorney to use up my money. She needed that money for her own business. All the money that my dad had saved up all those years was gone. What? I cried. Y you can't do that. But she could, and she already did. How will I pay for college? I asked her angrily. You'll have to hustle for the money like we all do, she replied. Then Stacy came in. She was carrying an armload of shopping bags from Gucci. Mom, Stacy said, I finally found the perfect dress for your wedding. My eyes widened in shock. What wedding? And if they could afford Gucci, they still had money and a ton of it. Angela just wanted to cut me off. My wedding is none of your business. There's no money here for you, she softly said. Then she told me to get out of her house. That's when I finally saw her for what she truly was. 
an awful, greedy woman. I was fuming from head to toe. I could feel the anger coursing through my body like hot lava. I jumped back into my car and drove away while I screamed curses at her. Witch? Devil in disguise? I was so upset that I wasn't thinking clearly anymore. All I knew was that I was angry and suddenly very hungry. I decided to swing by the grocery store. I called one of my friends and told her what Angela did. She's a gold digger, I said while placing all my purchases at the checkout counter. Angela married my dad to get money, and now she's going to marry someone else. Suddenly, I heard a gasp. It came from the bag boy who was putting my stuff in the grocery bag. He was staring at me. I guess my voice was a bit loud by then. I pulled out my debit card as usual. Sorry, miss. Your card's been denied, the cashier suddenly told me. Oh, no. In my anger, I totally forgot that my debit card was linked to my trust fund. If Angela took out the money for my rent and tuition fee, then my monthly allowance was gone as well. If you ain't got no money, you shouldn't be buying so much stuff, cried a man in the back of the line. Would you like to pay in cash instead? The cashier asked me kindly. I blushed a bright scarlet. I was so embarrassed. I knew that I had literally no cash inside my purse. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. Hey, the man in the back of the line said again. Are you going to pay or not? We're waiting here. I was about to say that I'll just put everything back on the shelf when the bag boy butted in. Hey, miss, you've got $200 in your grocery bag? What? I cried. He opened the bag and showed me. I nervously pulled the money out. Silly girl, said the woman behind me. She doesn't even know where she puts her money. After I got my change, I practically ran out of the grocery store. How did I get $200 in my grocery bag? Did I forget that I had money there? It felt like a really lucky coincidence that there would be money just waiting for me when I really needed it. But I forgot that mysterious money soon enough. Now, I was worrying about how to pay for school and rent. After a few days of panicking and crying, I heard a knock on my door, but there was nobody there. Instead, I saw a small box on my doorstep. It was wrapped like a present. Inside, I found a wallet with a credit card, and the credit card had my name on it. A note fell out of the wallet. It read, Here's a little something to help you. Please don't hesitate to use the credit card, and please don't think that this is a scam. I just want to help. It was signed, a friend. I was so confused. What was happening? Did I have a fairy godmother somewhere? First, it was the mysterious cash. Now there was a mysterious credit card. I had to find out where it was coming from. So, I called the bank that issued the credit card. They told me that everything was in order. It was under my name. And then, they thanked me for giving an advanced payment for whatever I charged on the card. I was in shock. Who is this friend? How did I get this lucky? But then, I got even luckier. The next morning, I got a call from my college. They told me to come over to pick up the receipt of the second semester's tuition. They even thanked me for paying the next year in advance. Then, the day got even weirder. My landlord suddenly knocked on my door. She gave me a basket of muffins as thanks. I stammered and asked her what for. I got your rent payments for a whole year. Thanks for giving it all in advance, she replied. The mystery of the credit card and all that money haunted me for a while. I felt so paranoid. Somebody had my information out there. What if they had committed a crime and the paper trail traced back to me? But there was no denying that I needed that money. Angela left me with absolutely zero dollars. I was very cautious with charging things on the credit card. I only bought food, toiletries, and some supplies for school. I felt like it was a stroke of good luck. I wanted to pay back the universe for giving me such a blessing, so I started to do volunteer work. I helped in the shelter and was even involved in a pet rescue mission. It was all going well until the day I saw Stacy. I bumped into her at the library. I found out that she was a freshman here now. She was also wearing designer clothes from head to toe. It's nice to see you, she said. I like your homeless look. And you're really good at cutting your own hair. Did you use kitchen scissors? The people around me started to laugh. I shot an angry look at Stacy and saw the librarian from the corner of my eye. She looked angry at the noise. But the librarian's face suddenly changed when she saw my stepsister. Miss Stacy, the librarian gushed. It's so nice to see you here. Please thank your parents for donating the money for our new library wing. I was stunned. Stacy looked like a hundred dollar bill stuffed in LV and Prada, and they were giving money away? I'll tell them, Stacy purred. We're only happy to help. Yeah, right. Her mother practically stole all that money from me. 
Then Stacy turned around and handed me a $20 bill. It's my gift to you. At least you won't need to cut out coupons anymore, she said sweetly. I threw the money right back at her smug, made-up face and stormed out. I had never felt as angry as I did then. Angela was a witch and a thief. She was a wolf in sheep's clothing. I wanted to hurt her so bad. And Stacy, too. I walked to the mall to clear my head. Right now, I couldn't think clearly. I really wanted to go back to Stacy and whack her with her stupid Hermes tote bag. I took a deep, calming breath and shook my head. What good will that do? Angela will probably send some cops over to arrest me. But I couldn't totally stop thinking about them. What really bothered me the most? Apart from the fact that Angela took my money. I was really angry at how they looked down on me now. Like I was dirt on their Prada shoes. Suddenly... I looked up and found myself in front of a clothing store. I didn't think. I just went in and started to pick out new clothes. It was petty, but I wanted to dress better than Stacy. When the counter rang up the bill, it was enormous. But I didn't care. I quickly gave the credit card to the cashier. I just wanted to feel better. My arms were heavy with the weight of all the shopping bags. I thought it would make me happy, but it didn't. I cried all the way home. I took a quick shower and wore my oldest pair of pajamas. It reminded me of the home I once had. Sobs burst out of me while I lay in bed. I want someone to love me. I want someone to take care of me. I want my parents back. But the next morning, I managed to pull myself together. I decided to bring all the clothes back. If I kept them, I would be taking advantage of someone who just wanted to help me. Angela took advantage of my dad that way. Back in school, I kept seeing Stacy. She pranced around the campus like she owned it. Perhaps maybe she did. I heard a lot of rumors about her. With the money that they donated to the school, of course people started to get curious. There were a lot of whispers. I heard that Angela got married again to an even richer man. Rumor was that he was a billionaire. I also heard that they bribed the university to let Stacy in. She flunked the entrance exam, so they found a way for her to get in. Then, I heard the biggest news yet. Angela and her billionaire were getting divorced because she was caught cheating on her husband. When I saw Stacy after the news broke out, she was still flaunting her expensive things around, but she looked terrible. There were circles under her eyes that couldn't be concealed by the most expensive makeup. I thought about their circumstances a lot. It dawned on me that I was also practically living off someone else's mysterious money, but I didn't want to do that anymore. So, I got a real job. I became a waitress in a restaurant near the school. The pay was low, but I got by with the tips. Soon, I stopped using the credit card. I had enough money of my own. It was kind of scary, but it also felt liberating. After a month or so, I got a letter. If you're free at 4 o'clock this afternoon, Please meet me at the park. I will wait for you beside the ducks. Again, it was signed, a friend. I could not wait to meet my angel. I went early. I sat there and waited to finally see the person who helped me so much. There was a man who was walking towards me. He looked vaguely familiar, but I just couldn't place him. Hi, Isabella, he said as he shook my hand. I'm your friend. I couldn't stop staring at him. I knew that I had seen him before. He must have noticed. Do I look familiar? He asked. Then he said the most amazing thing. Hey, miss, you've got $200 in your grocery bag? I got a major flashback from that trip to the grocery store. I jumped out and shouted, You're the bag boy! Yeah, he replied. I put that money in your bag. What? Why? Who was this guy? How could he be just a bag boy if he could give me that money and an unlimited spending on my credit card? He gave a little laugh and said, My real name is Steve. Then Steve told me the craziest story. He was actually the son of Angela's latest billionaire ex-husband. His father owned the whole chain of groceries. Steve had to work there so he could learn about the business from the ground up. But there was something that bugged me about Angela, he continued. I never liked her. I thought she was a con artist and a gold digger too. When I heard you talking about your stepmother at the counter, I realized that she was my new stepmother. Steve said that he hired a detective right after he realized that I was talking about the same woman. He also asked the detective to track me down. That's how he found out about my name and current situation. Steve continued, I also found out that Angela was having an affair right under my father's nose. I told father about it and he quickly filed for divorce. You actually saved us a lot of money because Angela was planning to use father's money for God knows what. I wanted to thank you, but I didn't want it to feel like charity. So I paid your school tuition and your rent. Then I got you a credit card. You've been so good to me, I replied. 
How can I ever repay you? Well, he said with a shy smile, I have to be completely honest. Ever since the day I saw you at the store, you kind of took my breath away. That's why I didn't mind hiding that cash inside your grocery bag. I didn't want you to lose your dignity in front of all those other customers. After I met you, I couldn't get you out of my mind. Don't freak out, I'm not a stalker. At first, I thought it was because we shared a common enemy. But when I learned more about you, it wasn't about Angela anymore. Would you like to go for a bite to eat sometime? Like, a date? I was taken aback. A date would be nice, I replied cautiously. But not dinner, okay? Let's have brunch or lunch. You want it during the day just in case I turn out to be a serial killer or anything, he replied with a laugh. I had to laugh too. But I got a good feeling about this. Somehow, I knew that my parents would approve. So you see, my life was really like a Cinderella story. I even got the Prince Charming in the end. 